come with us and make a festive vegan charcuterie board. Hey guys, it's Freya and Charlie and welcome to our channel. Yes, we are going to be making a grazing board. Grazing board, sharing board, charcuterie board, sharing board, I've probably already said that one already. Whatever you want to call it, it doesn't matter. They are perfect for this time of year. Yeah, so if you've got friends coming over or family, you're doing maybe like a Christmas gathering, just put a big old platter out. It's a really easy way of feeding your guests, but also kind of making it quite impressive as well. We also really love having it, just the two of us sometimes, when we're doing maybe like a date night. Oh, um, yeah. We don't want to make like a dinner. We'll just get those nice bits and bobs in. It's but... like crisps and hummus. Exactly. The way to the bank. It's yeah. like snacky dinner, but like elevated a bit, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, and they're so easy to make vegan too. You may think that it might be a bit complicated and you have to go out looking for so many different things, but some of the UK supermarkets have everything that you need to make mm. a vegan sharing board. Yeah, we got everything for this video from Sainsbury's, just our local Sainsbury's. Of course, if you go to lots of different shops, you'll get more variety, but especially mm -hmm. at this time of year with the vegan cheeses and meats, they put out extra special options. So um, yeah, our local supermarket had everything we needed, which was great. I think the main, the key to a charcuterie board, a vegan charcuterie board is you want your vegan cheeses and vegan meats and then yes. everything else, just add what you like. But we're sticking very sort of within the Mediterranean umbrella. Mm. So if yeah. you like crackers or breadsticks or uh, toast or whatever like carby thing you might want to have the cheese on, you need a bit of that. And and then just to freshen it up, you want some fruit in there. So some apple, grapes and oranges because they're pretty festive. And cranberries. And cranberries, yeah, we've gone full seasonal. <laughs> um, but just whatever fruit you like is the best one to get. And mm -hmm. then we've also got some nice little nuts on there. Yeah some herbs and then some uh, dips. So we've gone for a festive chutney because I don't know, I, you can't be cheese and chutney on a cracker. No, no. I think the key thing to boards like this is all about the arrangement of the board. This is very much Freya's wheelhouse. It's all yeah. what Freya does best, so. What we want to do is really make everything look as beautiful as possible. So think about spreading out the different colors and shape and adding in those extra garnishes. That's what really makes it extra special. So I think we're gonna get on and show you how we build a vegan festive charcuterie board. For our vegan cheese, we are using the Sainsbury's Plant Pioneers Christmas Selection. We essentially got this just to make life easier for ourselves. We've got four different cheeses in one. They're not necessarily the best vegan cheeses that you can buy. If your budget can stretch that far, then you know it, may, it might be nicer to go and get some of the more um, artisan vegan cheeses that you can get in your local health food stores. There's a shop in London called La Fromagerie and they are a vegan cheese shop. They get cheeses from all different vegan artisan brands and they're now selling uh, nationwide in Waitrose. So I think we're gonna go and get our hands on some of that for Christmas itself. But for today, we're gonna to be using this Plant Pioneers range and it will do the job perfectly. Most of the things that we are gonna be putting onto our board are ready to go, they're already prepared. There are a few things that I do need to prepare first and that is our cheeses, which I'm gonna slice up. Um, we've got some fruit that I need to chop up, the oranges and the apple. And that is about it, everything else is ready to go. So. I'm gonna get on with chopping up the cheese now. Some of these I'm gonna leave already whole because I think it's quite nice, if, especially if you're doing it for large groups of people. Sometimes you might wanna pre-cut -pre it so that you know, you've know you got everything divvied out and people aren't taking extra big slices if you've not got lots to go around. But if there's only a few of you, then you, know, you could leave it whole. Um, but I think I'm gonna do a little bit of both for this board. So this might not look like a lot of eat cheese, but we have to bear in mind that there are lots of other things that we're gonna to add to the board. So we wanna make sure that we leave enough space for all the lovely ingredients. When you're cutting your oranges or clems or whatever citrus you're using, you don't wanna cut it through the center like that. You wanna turn it on its side and cut it that way and that way you get the nice sort of star shape. I want them to see all the segments, they look really pretty. I'm gonna cut my apple into quarters and take the core out. 
You can use any kind of apple. I think these are just little British apples. I think it was at 85p for a bag of six, which is pretty good value. We are cutting the quarters into thin slices. And then a little trick to make sure that they don't go brown on the board is to cover them with a bit of lemon juice, which stops the apple from oxidizing and going brown. It doesn't really matter what kind of board you use. Um, we're going to go for this round one because I'm going to try and do a sort of Christmassy wreath situation. You could use a square board or a rectangular board, or if you don't have a board, you could simply roll out a piece of parchment straight onto the surface and do it right onto that. Either will work. So the first thing I'm going to do is lay out my greenery. We're using some fresh rosemary and thyme, and I'm going to place it around the edge of the board to create a sort of of wreath effect. You could use some greens like a bit of rocket or a bit of lamb's lettuce or anything like that but I love the way the rosemary looks it kind of looks like Christmas tree branches so that's what we're gonna go with. Adding the herbs isn't essential but like we said before it's these kind of little extra details that make it feel extra special so I think it's worth doing. Our board is already looking super Christmassy and we've not even got any of our ingredients on there yet. So the next thing I'm going to do is add in our little bowls and I've got three uh, bowls. We've got one for the olives, we've got one for the tapenade and then I've got a cute little jar here for the chutney. So this is just to help us with the shaping of the board. We put the big things on first and then we can kind of layer it from there. Next, I'm gonna add in our vegan cheese. So first I'm gonna go with this round one because it's the biggest here. Next, I'm gonna go in with this little stack of red Leicester. So we're using these lovely rosemary crackers from Sainsbury's. So don't be afraid to layer everything. It's okay if things are kind of like falling over each other. Uh, I think it just adds to the charm of the board. If we were using a bigger board, I'd probably leave these whole, but they're quite big for the size of board we're using. So I'm gonna break them in half and just layer them in. So I've decided I'm gonna swap a couple of things around and that's totally fine. So I'm gonna swap out this cheddar style for this, have that over there and then we're just gonna bring in uh, a little bit more color over here. It can often be difficult to make things like this look nice. It doesn't ever look particularly appetizing. So you could try and do a little sort of rose design or you could roll it up into curls. I'm gonna be making this sort of flower situation and you can just nestle them about all over the board. It's also a great way of adding in extra color because a lot of food on the board is a bit beige. So we wanna add color um, as much as possible. Next, I'm gonna add in these oranges because they're quite large. So they're gonna take up a lot of space on the board. You don't need loads, like it's not the first thing people are gonna dive in to eat. They just add that little bit of festive color, which is what we want. Next, I'm gonna add on the grapes and we've gone for a mixed pack. So again, we can get that color variation and I'm just gonna pull off little mini bunches and place them all over the board like so. The thing with these boards is the more you add, the better. We want things to look abundant and opulent and lavish because it's Christmas so just add everything on you want every little gap filled with delicious little treats so we've gone for walnuts and pecans but you could also use almonds or cashews or peanuts whatever your favorite nut is they're just great to nestle in in those little gaps we were talking about Next, I'm gonna add my apple slices, and these have kept their color really nicely, so the lemon juice has worked, thankfully. Um, I'm gonna pop these in, in this little gap here. Last few gaps. So I'm gonna be adding my tapenade. We've gone for a uh, Kalamata olive tapenade. And I'm gonna spoon that straight into this bowl here. Next, I'm gonna add in the olives and we've just gone for a trio of Greek olives. But again, whatever your favorite olive is, just go with that. 
Lastly, we're going to add in our chutney and we are going to be using this fake and sour cherry Christmas chutney. We didn't buy this from Sainsbury's, this was the one thing that we didn't get there. It's actually made in Bristol from a great local business, so if you are in Bristol, you should definitely go and get chutney from Ginger Beards Preserves. So our board is done, however, there is one last little extra touch that we are going to add and these are frozen cranberries. You don't have to add it, I just think it makes things look extra Christmassy and especially the frozen ones because they're covered in ice essentially, so they look very festive on the board. So building a vegan charcuterie board is relatively easy. It's all about creating those shapes. So top tips would be to make sure that you're not putting the same color thing directly next to each other. So if you've got some beigey crackers next to a beigey cheese, try and separate them. The other thing is making sure that you're putting different shapes all around the place. So try not to put too many circular things next to each other or too many uh, square things next to each other. So mixing it all up. The other thing I would say is don't be afraid to move things about. If you put some me down and you're not happy with where it is just move it about it's fine like nothing is set in stone I often tweak things um, and then last tip I would say is it's all about the garnishes so the little nuts the little cranberries and the uh, herby garnishes are what really lifts the whole thing as you can see it's looking wreath like uh, if you wanted to make it even more wreath like you could leave the center empty if you had a bigger board but we didn't have a lot of space so we filled it to the brim and I can't wait to tuck into this for dinner later. Thank you so much for watching this video and we really hope we've given you some inspiration to go off and make your own vegan festive charcuterie board. Wherever you are in the world, take advantage of what is freshest and best this time of year for you. Don't do exactly what we've done, just take inspiration from us and go out and be creative. If you enjoyed this video, we would really appreciate it if you could give it a like. It really means a lot to us and really helps our channel. Uh, I think we're going to go and enjoy the charcuterie board with a festive movie. I'm yeah. thinking maybe Elf, maybe mm, The Grinch. Polar Express. Oh, okay. Mm. We've got some options. <laughs> and we will see you in our next video. Bye.